It's time for the big stuff. It is time for a, a lot of stuff. Let's get to the church. Let's go underneath the thing. Let's, um... Let's do it. Let's go confront Ruby. Rub Rudy? Rub Rubdy? Down we go. And you know what? You know what? I am here... I gotta be honest, I'm here in a police uniform with a policeman's hat. Granted, I've got a chunky bunch of armor beneath my body. A nice necklace from uh, the, uh, a nice necklace from the fucking, um, uh, the, the cryptozoologist people. And for the first time in ever, I am going to go in with a gun and a flashlight like a real fucking cop. Holding the gun feels natural and satisfying. It's like an extension of your arm, the polished wooden handle almost fusing into your palm. It reminds you of the day you first held it with fear and respect, hoping you don't have to use it in vain. The sun was out in Jamrock. It was so long ago. Sheathe your sidearm, officer. A serious law official, cop by the book, should know to only unholster their service weapon when using it is unavoidable. Okay, fair enough. I'll put the I'll put the gun down. But I'm keeping the flashlight. All right. Here we go. It's time. Oh. Even more outfits, even this far down. <gasps> more money! Money! Suddenly, your entire body is paralyzed. Jesus a Christ! A white noise fills your skull. A strange pain like you've never felt before. Through the setting, you hear a woman's voice. It's like a thousand radio stations are being blasted into your head all at once. Oh my the God. words are the only ones you can make out. I know you're feeling pretty uncomfortable right now. Don't move too much or fight it. That'll just make it worse. Okay. Can't say it's a pleasure, officer. I was really hoping not to make your acquaintance. But here we are. The voice coming through the world with a pain is not malicious. She doesn't want to hurt you. But she has to. Doesn't wish to hurt you. Not according to your air canals. Wait, no. Not even your air canals. This is going directly into your neural pathways. I'm gonna cover my ears anyway. Nobody. That's not going to help. You can't shield yourself. Thank God I got HP. It's an entirely new type of experience. Way worse than all the previous ones. Don't focus on the pain. Focus on doing your job. Tell her she's under arrest. Really now? Check this out. You're overwhelmed. Oh my god. A surge of violent static. It feels like a blood vessel exploded in your brain. I'm using a pale latitude compressor. You and your partner have been caught in its field. I don't know. Oh, pa oh, the pale. Oh, Jesus. Blasted from that pale emitter that Angus mentioned. Saw my equations? You've been sniffing through my lorry, right? I expected as much. I am a bit surprised you knew what you were looking at. Jesus. You should probably check on Kim. That's what good partners do. All right. Right behind you, officer. Double over. He's still alive and breathing. A latitude compressor is used to sort of make the pail more manageable. 
With a lot of these, you can force a radio signal grid on the pail. Literally crunch the distance across it. But I'm going to assume that if it's not on the pail, things are really bad. Signals are relayed across a series of repeater stations fixed to buoys. Not a fun job manning those stations. All alone out there in the pail, people lose their minds in just a few years. So, what we are experiencing is a concentration of radio waves. Precisely. This is an industrial strength paraboloid. It's meant for forcing dimensions on something that doesn't have them. Needless to say, the frequencies used are out of this world. At the upper limit is the large prime. Why are you explaining this to me? Station. I'm in ungodly pain. Specifically for pale latitude compression. That's why you may be hearing some numbers. But you might also hear, or think you're hearing, local radio chatter. She's been holed up in here for a while with no one to talk to. Keep her talking. And you just might get an opportunity to break the loose. Okay. I built it myself. She nods towards her torture device. And she's proud of it too. As she ought to be. This is way beyond your abilities. That's illegal. I'm guessing it's patented. But we are beyond that, aren't we? <laughs> oh yeah. Way beyond. Will I stay like this forever? No. Once I shut down the compressor, the pain will end. It may take a few minutes for you to steady yourself, though. It's a bit like waking out of a very confusing dream. my head in there before using it on you it seemed like the ethical thing to do can't say that i enjoyed it the field was weaker but i can imagine what you're going through this is a great novel let's talk about the man who was killed yeah let's not talk about that shit you were hunting me and fell into my trap instead that's all there is to say about it all right if you've got something really important to say you can do it through the white noise oh I do need a deal on mattresses. <laughs> That's funny. God damn it. You can with sudden sympathy. Fine. If you really want to talk, I can dial it down. I've also got a gun, by the way. Okay. The gun she's carrying is a two barreled front loader. Not like the murder weapon. Not like the murder weapon. Well, it doesn't feel much better, but you can form sentences now. Thinking doesn't seem to hurt as much. Just keep her talking. And you'll Holy be shit! I heard you in the passages, and I've been preparing for quite a while. So you found my shack, huh? It's my shack I'm not now. Surprised. Her tone is bitter. She thinks she's been betrayed. She didn't write you out, by the way, the washerwoman. So nice. That's one knife I didn't want to find to my back. I was, before I caught you in the pale latitude compressor. I'm fine now. It was dark in the shack. The waves outside had calmed down. She looked at the loaded gun. Then she cracked the barrel open and took the bullet out. Not today. Hmm. Hmm. No, I didn't do it. I only helped stage the lynching. Though I doubt that makes much of a difference to you. So she says she didn't do it, and she doesn't trust you. Is it you specifically, or the citizens' militia that she distrusts? Who the hell shot the man? Who ratted me out, by the way? Was it Titus? No, he wouldn't have broken first. Oh, I knew the kitten had claws, but not like this. But she couldn't have known I was on the coast. How did you find me? Uh, I guess I have to tell them. Your first guess was entirely I just off. Boys, man. They told us you were on the coast. Even now, Kim is a paragon of professionalism. He is trying to make a clean cut of telling her she was betrayed. Well, fuck. Those guys liked me. I know it. 
If this is what happens to people whom people like... A dull despair is creeping into her voice. How the fuck do the rest of you get by? <laughs> it wasn't that you called me a human can opener? I did, didn't I? Now you've come for me. Fuck them all the same. That did make her forgive them. A little. Like what? I already told you I didn't do it. Man, I, I wanted to, I, I wish I could have taken the goddamn... I should have done the pain threshold check. I didn't know, realize I would lose it. I didn't realize I would lose the check. I would have loved to just like body checked the fucking device. I'm so sad I don't have it anymore. I didn't realize I, I w it would go away. I didn't like him. Hardened mercenaries aren't particularly likable types. You don't feel sympath- uh, Protective of the Union? Yeah, sure. And I didn't like Wild Pines sending in those foreign hirelings. Me and a fuck ton of other people around here. She didn't hate it, okay? I'm listening. Man, I was with the boys the whole night. I hope they at least bothered to impress that upon you. That's a really long week. Yeah, and I'm sure they also made some funny remarks about it. They always do. I've driven a lot of long haul and chugged a lot of beer, man. Can't do either without some power of mind over bladder. And anyway, that wouldn't have been enough time. No one takes 15 minute Look, leak. Fuck you, man. I might also have stopped by the bar. Wow. Now I'm curious. Please, explain. There's a secret way from the first floor to the whirling to the Don't roof. Don't know it. But also... She frowns to your face. The shot couldn't have come from the roof. Or we would have all heard it downstairs. She has a point there. She Do does. That didn't go super well. You've got to lay something better on her. Running drugs for the Union. So, Heart of Gold Tommy fucked me over too. Never trust a musician. Oh, yeah. No, Tommy didn't. Oh, no. That really comes as a blow to her. No, he didn't. I did it my own way. Okay, great. You got into my lorry on your own. I'm gonna walk. What now? I did a slam. Are you going to arrest me for drug trafficking? Beneath it. She's relieved. Tommy didn't betray her. Final ant of incentive to kill a merc. Yeah, it's true. Man, it's to get away from all that murderous shit that I left Jamrock. My you know, I, this this investigation is good, but the constant static in the background is a little annoying. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> that thanks, Kim. I got lucky being a dispatcher. Never had to do any of the really dirty work myself. This gun has only been used for self-defense against serious scum. Then it's going to be easier to reach the machine now. But you're threatening us with it now. Based on what I've heard about you, you are serious gun. Hey! There's a sinister note in her voice. Even with the gun and the compressor, she's afraid of you. Did she leave any flowers for her on the roof? No. Gifts of flowers and candy aren't really my style. Nope. Mm. No, I did not. You have a gun. And? Do you collect guns? No, they're not practical. Break too often. Yeah. That's all, that's all I got. Yeah? Where? More. More questions before doing anything. No, I refuse. Go for it. Yeah! Pain threshold! I'm too powerful for you! Push it! Push it to the limit! You did it. The compressor lies broken on its side. Hell yeah. It's quiet in your head again. Let's go. It still hurts like hell. But... You okay, Kim? <sighs> All good, officer. Be careful. Hell yeah. She looks at the machine, assessing the damage. Her hand trembles. Oh, fuck it. <gasps> she's truly desperate. She thinks she has oh! no other options. You need to give her options. You know. This is how you talk her out of it. It's the only scenario in which she lives. 
Put your hands up. She stares at you, frozen, the gun still in her mouth, eyes filled with dark intensity. Then something shifts in her. Gratitude, doubt. She's still ready to go. You're not cornered. I'm letting you go. Day of miracles. I'll take it. She runs past you, then past the lieutenant, and disappears into the darkness of the tunnel. Good call. Yeah, I'm sure. I would have done the same had I not been incapacitated. He couldn't take it like you. It irks him. Then he gets over it. Yeah, I don't think she did it actually. Her tent. We should check it out. Who the fuck shot Liv Lily? God damn it, dude! When are we gonna find the person? Probably in like an hour. Probably very soon, if I'm being honest. Oh, thank God for the extra HP. Money? Oh, hell yeah, eight real. The plain red tent stands by <sighs> dispassionately. It was pitched by practiced hands. She's used to camping out. The tent looks old, but well maintained. In the darkness of the tent, a rolled up sleeping bag, cooking utensils, some books, and a kerosene lamp. My luck with these rolls in the last, like, two hours has been ludicrous. I'm ready for it to all soon fail. It reeks of cigarettes. Assorted soft covers, mostly pulp horror. A motor carriage lies buried in the snow on one cover. On another, a ghost airship. You also see a collection of radio enthusiast magazines. See anything? <sighs> Rager Monthly. Journal of Material Science. More Technological Digest. One of the magazines doesn't have images on the cover. It's not a magazine. It's a leather notebook. You pocket the worn brown leather journal. A trusted friend left behind. We should read this immediately. Like, right now. Yes, sir, Kim. A thick journal. The cover is worn like someone used to carry it around in their back pocket. Examine the cover. It's made of full grain leather. The lower left corner of the back cover sports an embossed brand name. Schnella. This was important to her. When it was still hers, the journal falls open. About two thirds of its ruled pages have been filled. The large cursive of someone who writes quickly and confidently. Ew, cursive. Perhaps too confident. Cringe. Many phrases and even paragraphs have been crossed out, with tiny corrections scrawled above and in the margins. It's a mix of logistical notes, diagrams, and personal reflections, all dated. It's good she left in a hurry. We could learn a lot from this. What kind of logistics? Hard to tell exactly. It's mostly noted down in code. There could be useful information, information quantities, directions, in those notes. diagrams, esoteric radio technology. The most recent ones probably pertain to the latitude compressor. Okay, so personal short, stuff? Dry observations That's all not important. And places. Probably a way to pass the time on the road. Also, what appears to be attempts to sort through some difficult decisions. There are a few passages with many questions in them. The way some of those question marks trail off into ellipsis. She was going through a tough time. Staff issues. Always tough on the leadership. You smell traces of betrayal. The first entry is from August 2nd of last year. It reads simply, I know my position is precarious. All I can do is make myself as useful as I can while looking for a way out. Remember, no one is indispensable. What did she write the day Lily died? Nothing on March 4th. March 5th though, well, that's bound to come back and bite me in the ass. I'm bad at this, loyal to a fault, except but that's another matter entirely. Sounds like the bite me in the bass journal, uh, ass journal was on the uh, the lynching, not of the shot. You have no idea what she means. Oh, God damn These it, are logic. Personal notes. Don't expect to understand all of it. The most recent entry is from today. It reads, even when I leave here, if I leave here alive, what's my next move? Staging a lynching is a crime, 
even if I'm not accused of murder on top of that. Forever on the run. Not really my idea of the open road. Man, I was really looking forward to winning. I just don't think she killed a mercenary. It's mostly a gut feeling, though, since we let her walk out without hearing her side of the story. Well, yeah, also, also um, you know, there's also, I mean, she could have just written that and that, that, that could have been it, you know? It's like, man, it sure was nice how I only staged the lynching. Cops find the book. Damn, I guess she didn't do it. She says she only staged the lynching. That would be a first or a fourth, but who's counting? He thinks. Very rarely does anyone actually get framed. If she didn't do it, then maybe it's good that we didn't catch her? I wouldn't go so far as to say that. Yeah, I wouldn't say that we either. We have other reasons to arrest her. Besides, I'm not sure her life as a fugitive is going to be much better than we does. Who do you think killed the murder? Could have been Titus. Then again... No one heard the shot. <laughs> T-Man wouldn't fuck me over! Either way, we need to keep an <laughs> T -Man. eye T-Man! Somewhere along the way, we might have been fed a lie. Yeah, we certainly would have. One thing is for certain. We have business back in the whirling and rags. Questions to ask. We should get to it. T-Man! I leveled up, right? I did. Oh. Wait. No. I was like, I can ask the girl out on a date again, but then I realized Kim is here. I might need to save this check for something later, though. Another important, like, check. My, my, my save scum skill points, basically, you know? This has got bad written all over it. Okay, let's put the flashlight away. Good old hobo cop. We're back to hobo cop. Actually, I think I uninternalized hobo cop. No, I don't. I'm still the superstar hobo cop combination. Why can't I? Okay, I guess I can't fast travel. That's very bad. That means I'm going to run into something very bad on the way over. That's, oh, I know exactly what that means. I know what video game terms like that mean. Oh, God. Oh, God. <sighs> There's my car. up ahead. Danger. Ah! What you have isn't enough. You need more firepower. A ranged weapon. Snowflakes stick to your pry bar. Or crowbar. Or pry bar. Call it what you will. It doesn't stand a chance against military grade weaponry. Be prepared. Make sure you have your pepper box in your hand. Your fingers reflexively reach for the Villiers 9mm pistol in your pockets. Then you'd better get ready. Whatever. Okay. I'm all out of shit to give, loincloth. Welcome to the fucking reckoning. Oh my god, the tribunal's already happening. I thought I had more time. I thought I had more time. I hate to comment on this right now just because of the situation we're about to enter, but this chick is double-cheeked up like crazy. What, what, why does the mercenaries give her all that ass and that armor? Holy shit. Wait, this music is good. 
This I, I'm trying my best to explain how nice this music is and point everything out because right now I'm fucking terrified. <sighs> okay. <sighs> Put your damn gun down. People are gonna get hurt. We need to talk this through. All right. There's a that dude on the left. Who is that? There's another guy. He has a big gun. Shut up. Not gonna talk yourself out of this, loincloth shit fuck. That's a whole lot of words. This is the mercenary at the gates. His chest rises and falls under the ceramic breastplate. His fingers reach for the butt of his sidearm. He's literally holding it in his hand. There's something very wrong with him. Shh. This is a misunderstanding. Nothing irreversible has happened yet. You can just return to your unit and forget all about this. Elizabeth. Shut up. The kicked is merciful. Willing to spare us if we just forget about our murdered and humiliated commander. I think we should just kill everyone, Corti. Oh my god. You are all drunk. Come to your senses. You won't gun down seven people in the middle of the street. This isn't a frontier town or a jungle outpost. Easy, Lizzie. Let me handle it. I know okay. guys like this. I'm sure we can come to a peaceful agreement. Ain't that right, fellas? He is facing overwhelmingly superior firepower. Uh huh. And he knows it. Peaceful. It sounds like the armored figure is weeping. Holy, what is that mask? That is baller as hell. Nest in your abdominal cavity like a little wild mouse. The masked man's words are barely intelligible, but you can hear them. Fuck, there's a third one. How did we miss something like this? I just a point, I don't- The lieutenant is genuinely worried for his life. You should consult him before getting in there. We're out of time. The mercenary tribunal. Yep. My plan is not to get killed, but we have to intervene. He doesn't want to, but he must. If this turns into a firefight, we should take him out first. We're cops, so we get- we- <laughs> Stop, this is the police. Oh, this is the worst. Get lost, comedian. <laughs> you cops had your chance. Now it's fucking time for some justice. He wicks his lips, waving his gun at the crowd. Losing his balance for a moment, he staggers backwards. Okay, so he is drunk. I think he's calmed down a bit. No, he didn't. He's about to open fire. Oh, that's just Half Light talking to me. Uh, he's calming down, I can talk to him. You can't think that way now. This is serious. Pig, fuck! Oh. Uh. Let's try the, let's try the calm approach. Easy now, no one needs to die here today. No, people are gonna die today. We're not leaving it like this. These tribals hung him up for everyone to see. No one is going to kill anyone. Let's just put the guns down and talk like civilized human beings. With a wordless gurgle, the killer loads his long rifle. The leader gives a small nod to the helmeted man. Suddenly, the grip of your sidearm feels comforting and warm in your hand. Feels like it's saying, do it. Even if it comes to a fight, it's always a good idea to drag it out first. Get under his skin. <sighs> Peace. Always. Oh, no! <laughs> it has worked thus far. Start with the first idea you have, then move down from that. Please. Huh? Ah. Huh? Ah. Ah. Rude. Rude is the killer. Rude, the killer, Hoan Cloven. He doesn't talk much. 
All of you cunts inside out. What was that rude? Rip you open. Okay. The gunner. The raddest. The killer. What do you think he does? There, on the rim of Owen Clerven's helmet, you count me to stick figures. 19, 20, 21. Oh. About 50 little stick figures. All of them black, plus two little white ones in the end. Ah, uh. that's right. Plenty of chips here in Revachal too. Okay. Fool. Fool. T, let's fucking do it. My man, Eugene, I'm I'm with you on this one. I'd be fucking furious. Gene. Easy, easy. Man. Hey, man, you know, it's like, it's like with the Nazis, you know, they always had the best drip. The worst people always seem to have the best drip. The dude's mask is fucking awesome. And he's just the, the horrible psychopath. Why do the bad people always have the nice drip? I don't understand. <sighs> they, they didn't do it. Didn't do what? That doesn't help. Uh, yeah. Who did? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who did it. Time. You had time to fuck around in that church. Chase some dumb drug trader. I saw you. Time is up, loin cloth. Give me a name. Now. How? Fucking convenient. I'm gonna I'm gonna kill Gart. Isn't he up there, right there? If I what if I like What the fuck? <laughs> what are you doing? You think I'm fucking stupid, cop? <laughs> what if I just shot one of your pals here, right now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm trying to internalize my fear with humor. Go ahead. Tell me it was the fucking cafeteria manager one more time. Listen, please. This cop and this drumhead cop marshal won't decide who- He's gonna do it. He's gonna shoot her. Your mind grinds to a halt. All you can see is the revolver in the man's armored hand, swaying, pointed at her. I don't have an option. You move your mouth like a fish gasping for air. No, she wasn't even there. He pulls the <gasps> the erupts from the muzzle. Oh my god! And nothing of value was lost. Anyway. The shot rings in your ears. A low tinny ring. Then the Hardy Boys yell something. I'm okay. Damn it! I'm okay. I'm sorry, that was mean. I really didn't like her. <laughs> I'm sorry. I really did not like her. She's cool. She's good. She's good. She's not. She's bleeding out. Oh. If she doesn't get help in 10 minutes, she'll die. Fuck this. No, no, no. Eugene, no, no, no. Cancel Lizzie. Now! Danger. Ask about ah. first. You don't want personal facts about his dead friend coming out of your mouth. He has to start it. I knew you weren't a goddamn scab leader. Yeah, I don't fucking act so well. Laylee had a hard on for making faces for you natives. Fucking food aid shit. That shit is enough now. Trigger time. 
Who are you, Cordy? Sergeant Major Raoul Cortiner. Cortiner. Reporting in to burn this fucking mud hut to the ground. As he moves, the interlocking pieces of his armor click softly. For killing, maiming, and humiliating our commanding officer, you're all sentenced to death by lead. Uh, Ellie, everyone says good things about him. He was a talker. Fuck do you mean? Talker. He was chatty. We've heard testimony. People say he was charismatic. A nice guy to be around. Yeah. He liked to chat up the natives. Share leaflets. Squeeze a bit of kit ass here and there. Great fucking idea that turned out to be. If Lely was here, he would spare the lot of you. Maybe shoot one for sure. But me, I'm not a big fan of public affairs, Clay Monkey. I'll gun every one of you down for what you did. Ready to open fire, Major. At your command. This one isn't used to being suited this long. She's uncomfortable. We'll open fire just to hurry things along. Okay, I got a plus one for the blue eyes statement, so I'm gonna go with the blue eyes. Baby blue, yeah. Like someone fucked up and put a baby's eyes on a grown man. It was creepy. But bitches, bitches like that shit, I guess. Or, I don't know what bitches like. I just know how to mow down cloths. Our colonel did what he had to do. It was either one cunt, or a hundred of them. Rude here. In your shit pipes, right in the fucking... Oh, he is so drunk. He likes to fire mortars at random coordinates. Wipe out mud huts like that. And he gets bored. Lately knew how to command. He was a good commander. I can see you miss him. Oh yeah. He would have commanded this fuck hell way better than I did. That didn't happen. Because Hayseed Bill and Kipty the Kipped here. Okay. Hayseed Bill is kind of funny. The other part is not funny. Hayseed Bill's a little funny for Titus. Fucking murdered him. Had him stink the village up for two weeks after. You fox did nothing. Listen, man. We told you we told us what? What did you say? Tattoo fuck. You'll die next. Right when she kicks out. Find his killer. Cop, his killers stand right there, shitting their pants, and you're standing in the way, protecting them. Not quite, one's down. They they didn't. Charge. Blood's all gone out now. Not long to go till the rattle starts. One down, girl. Seven to go. Big talk, but you've got him to admit he's a bad leader. It's a small thing, but it got him off center. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, these other options are not good. These other options are very bad. Minus one got Gardner shot. Oh, this is shoot him. This is shoot him. Oh, Lord. <sighs> yes. So what? Yeah, so what? You should be drunk too. Or, like, drunker. You don't want to die sober, do you? Fucking horrible. A girl got shot. Because of you? Only warm alcohol will help soothe the guilt. Shut up. Let him think. Too much is on the line. He's not gonna fuck it up because of you. I won't let you. Nah. I'm clear as day. Fucking government ordained super soldier. Enough already! What is this? We didn't come here to fucking chat! No, oh, no. Interrupt me again, and I will execute you on the spot, Lance Corporal. You think I care what that company cunt thinks? <laughs> no, Wild Pie. The man stares at you with bloodshot eyes, a bull ready to charge. He's not listening, but looking for an opening. She's gone, you stupid fuck! Sailed off five minutes ago. She doesn't give a shit about you, silos. Stay cool! 
How is she? I'll be okay. I'll be. Duh. She'll be gone soon, too. Company bitch is gone. Lally is gone. Fuck are we still doing it, shithole? Guys, I, um. Uh, I just get in the way. I don't even have a gun. Hold your ground. Any more you run out. Oh my god, he ran away. We're doing this together. They're afraid. All of them. Trembling reeds in the wind. They'll run. Scatter soon. One by one. No, the rest will stay. They would hold their ground, even if it means dying here with you. Oh, I don't have any. That's both 42%. There's nothing. Oh, they're so bad. That's, uh, huh? All right. Ah! Here we go. This is an illegal tribunal. Krenno would never sanction this. Who's the commanding officer? Take your pick. Oh. Really? None of this looks like it's going to do anything but piss him off. Are you officially in charge of this unit after the death of your colonel? Me? I fucking told you. I'm a Cronell Major with 15 years of live combat experience. When my colonel gets hanged by clay monkeys, I lead the platoon on a retaliation strike. So you are the highest ranking of the three? Nah, I just have the biggest gun. Technically, the other man has the biggest gun, but we're beyond that now. What's the highest rank in Cronel? King Reaper. He says without irony, as the leader of this group, could reconsider your access to none yet. You're right, but you see, I want it to end in bloodshed. Okay, it's not much, but he's thinking about something else, and his hand is off the gun. This did something. Now fire. Fuck them up. Do it. The muscles on your back tense up. I need to buy the tiniest bit more time if I can. Who the fuck is that? Glacier, the woman upstairs. Where is she? She left! God, what the hell are you doing here? What am I doing? My fucking establishment is under fire! You know how much windows cost? She left! Her room's cleaned out! Right before these assholes showed up! We should have arrested her. Oh, sh sh You can feel how upset he is with himself. Just for shit. a second. Then the fear takes over and he's back in the moment. Hey, Bushman! Your little cunt isn't gonna help you out of this one! She's gone. Forget about it now. Concentrate on this. <laughs> no! A small explosion expels the bullet from the chamber. With a puff of smoke, it hits the man square in the chest, producing a soft clicking sound in the armor, like dice rolling. Go ahead, give it another try. This time feels different. You age back as if <laughs> your hand goes numb from the explosion and a plume of smoke erupts from the gun. Go ahead, go ahead. What are you gonna do? Shoot me, man who got shot? There is a hole in his cheek. He's not smiling anymore. He stumbles backward, eyes filled with disbelief, gurgling. His lips moving. Swollen with fear, are trying to say, shoot him, shoot him, but he can't. I'm so dead. To your right, the killer raises his rifle and takes aim at you. His moves are steady, but the long barrel of the rifle sways slowly. Does the shot! A low shot rings. You feel a tapping like rain on your chest plate heavy drops of rain then the sound of dice rolling as the cuirass distributes the shot evenly from plate to plate oh yeah i wore the, i wore the fucking chest piece i forgot i wore oh let's go you got hit the armor took most of it but still your ribcage burns feels like blood is slowly seeping into your lungs 
God, please. Without trembling, his arm, he aims face pale. Two shots ring at once. <laughs> One from the lieutenant's pistol and the other from the balls. It's aimed at the lieutenant, but it misses. You hear a scream behind you. Blood gushes from the helmet's eye sockets as Rude staggers back, disoriented. The sounds coming from his helmet are not human. An unbelievable shot from the lieutenant. What the fuck was it like, like in the, in like the side of the throat or something like the tiny part of the gap? Glenn, dying in a puddle of blood behind you. Oh, boy. His mangled torso has two gunshot wounds. Blood gushes out of them like red geezers. Oh God, watch out. You see two crazed eyes stare at you through all the smoke and the panic. With blood gushing from his face, the man raises his pistol at you. Then he squeezes the trigger. Box cars, we make these. We don't make these. You can't. There is no time. Something inside your pelvis explodes. Your entire lower body is on fire, and your legs can't support you. You fall oh, down like fuck. a doll. The pain is too immense to scream. It pushes the air out of your lungs. Everything goes dark. A distant blur as you recede into it. The Hardy Boys are screaming, fighting, dying. Someone jumps over you. Nearby gunfire shatters glass. Stop! The cop! Protect the cop! He's down! Feels slick and warm with blood. The pain is too strong to know what has happened there. Even clutching to your consciousness takes everything you've got. The parts of me are missing? Most of what's down there. Oh God. It's all gone. Open your eyes now. You have to see what's happening. No, no. It's just a fear. Even if... Who cares? No one wants you anyway. Inland Empire? Nothing. A persisting darkness. Dancing lights of pain. Distant shadows cast by them. Like a hellish play. You're bleeding out. <laughs> Live fast, die old. Yes. Keep talking. Stay awake. Look at me. But you can't. It's so hard. Your eyelids grow heavy and the sounds ever more distant. And a cold comes over you. The lieutenant, too, is somewhere far away. Almost gone. When suddenly, you sense something behind him. A slender white shadow towering. Someone stands there, raising her pistol at him. The lieutenant does not see it. He's pushing down on your wound with both hands. Kim, lieutenant trusts you. Kim truly trusts you. No, you scream. Behind you, from your bloody lips, your eyes are full of fear. There is no room for hesitation. The lieutenant turns around and fires, his body falling on yours in the course of the motion. You hear a faint scream, a woman's. Then the sound disappears, like someone pressed stop on the tape. The woman is gone. So is Kim. Then the whole world. This is death. One more door, baby. One more door. No, no, I want. Come on, let's get, let's get our ass back there. The fight. There is no fight. The fight is over. It was lost a thousand years ago. You have laid here forever. Keep falling deeper. Take the door. He's not taking it. His body is not taking it. Oh, God, no. He's not disintegrating. He's swelling up instead. 
Wait, this is good. Moaning in his sleep. Right? And rotting and being disinfected. Oh, let's go. Smelling of drugs and feeling saliva in his mouth. Drifting in painkillers. Thrashing in his bone sleep. He can't go. Not before the case is solved. There was a radio in the distance. A radio of the world. Plain sounds. Good morning, Elysium. Soon you will return to the world. You're thirsty. Reach for the glass of water by the bed. The world is still there. Sleep some more. Hours turn to days. Soon we will get up again and go through it again, again. Finally, we know what the infernal engine was outside. It was him. He is the infernal engine. He never stops. He only gets worse. You see the lieutenant's familiar shape in the orange jacket. It turns double. Oh, my room! From the pain. Yo, my room! Sunrise Parabellum. Sunrise Parabellum. I don't know what that means, but my room is all nice again! Wait, what? He's in the middle of a freshly cleaned room with the fan above his head like a halo. His face is covered in bruises. The piss jacket, Kim? You took it off? It's not ouch time yet. You just got the dramin pill an hour ago. Wait until it wears off. Mr. Gart cleaned it. It took him an entire day. Two days, in and out. You've been up enough to take Dwamin and curse. And drink water. The piss jacket, Kim, you took it off? Yes. The joke wasn't funny anymore. I took it off. It was, yeah. Wait, what you say? Sunrise? Sunrise Parabellum. Sunrise, prepare for war. It's an old revolutionary scene. Oh. My gun, it's engraved on it. It served you well. Yeah. The gates of the harbor are boarded up. The streets are a little more empty. Apocalyptic violence is yet to erupt, I am relieved to say. I think we may have held it off, for now. Barely. Good. Yes, we have also completely failed, but that's okay. <laughs> what happened? You shot the Major in the face. A firefight ensued. Okay. Yes. Yeah, let's go! A bloodstained killer. You're an officer of the RCM. I'm waiting for a reply. As yeah. retaliation, the rifleman tried shooting you. He hit the cuirass. I heard it go off. I was looking for a clear line of sight to him. I shot and wounded him, while Glenn took a bullet in the spine. It was meant for me. He did not survive. Oh, shit. This is not the first person to die in his place. He goes on. Titus, Fat Angus, and Theo charged. Angus and Theo did not make it. Oh my god! They both died before they made it to intensive care. Titus survives. So do Alain and the musician. I forget his name. Eugene? Yes. He's still alive too. You were bleeding out. You said something. I don't know what. And you warned me. I was able to disarm Officer de Paul before she got the jump on me. Thank you. I killed her. And that's what happened. I thought she only smoked once a day. This is the one. <laughs> and they're dead, the rest of them are saying? Evart had their bodies returned to Connell for a funeral. The company is yet to retaliate. Because we deterred them? Or Joyce did? Maybe the harbor in full lockdown is too costly a target. Or maybe... Maybe they are simply taking their time and will attack soon. I don't know. He nods. Four. Glenn, Theo, Angus. The fat one. He took a lot of bullets. <laughs> They're still fat shaming even to the end of the game. And Elizabeth too. Elizabeth Beaufort was her name. The gardener. She did not make it? No, she bled out before Evart's surgeon could help her. Evart sent his personal doctor, but a costly loss for the Union. She was being trained for leadership. 
Ah, I'm not that upset. Lawyers, man. I know you did. It's all right. That's right. All. Not. Uh, that's a total shit show, Kim. Yes, officer. Six people are dead. It's not a success. This says seven. You got a problem with the. You know. But what's done is done. The violence is cold enough. The Hornet did not get into the beehive. The worst scenario has not materialized yet. And we are still alive. Both of us. His smoking. His hunched back. You have it worse. But he took a real beating. That cigarette has medicinal purposes. How bad am I hurt? Reasonably bad. You were shot in the left quadriceps. That's your thigh. It appears no major arteries were nicked. The bullet was removed and a bacterial infection treated with mercurochrome. I love how I love how Kim knows that Harry is too stupid to know what the quadriceps is, so he specifically said the thigh. The bruising in your shoulder is negligible. The armor took the brunt of the fire. Oh, that's interesting. So I if I Oh, if I got the legs off, oh, if I got the legs off of Le uh, uh, Lely before, then I would have been, ah. Oh. We will see. Oh, no. If it's possible, then by pure willpower alone, you are going to have to become a psycho locomotor. I am a psycho locomotor. Good. You'll need to be. Whatever that is. No. Typical. A man and a woman sit in the front seat of an armored motor carriage. The woman is driving. The man lights a cigarette. Jean Vicmer is his name. The asphalt vanishes under the wheels of the machine. Ahead, harbor cranes rise to the sky. Back to that shithole, he says. They don't care about me at all. I called your station after the fight. The injury was logged in. They told me they've sent officers to join you on the site. Have you seen any? I'm sure they are worried about you. No one gives a shit. I did. No need. Not very. I have a concussion from that woman beating me with the butt of her gun. I try to not move too much. Things would be worse if you didn't warn me. Thank you. I did not see her coming, stupid of me. Easy now. Turn subble again before your uh, your eyes an orange hue of pain. Your balance is way off. You feel like you're about to fall over on that thing. How are you? <laughs> My disco days are done. Your disco days should have been done quite a while back, Lieutenant Euphrater. You, Lieutenant, double Euphrater. I honestly don't know. Good, because I totally do. Do you? Because we can't talk to Everhart. The harbor is in lockdown. Everyone in there is outside our grasp now. And Joyce has left too. Yes, she left yesterday morning. To meet the board of Wild Pines. Oh, that is what I've heard. There's a pin somewhere in the machine that keeps Connell from sending in a death squad. Oh. Maybe it's her. Maybe she kept her hand. Either way, Ruby's gone. And Classio too. We really should have arrested her, you know? Who killed the guy? I don't know. Ugh. I think the theory you presented, it's someone else outside our circle of suspects, was right. It better be. Everyone within the circle is either dead or gone. Honestly, I think our investigation has not produced a single credible suspect. I thought it might have been, um, the dude with the giant gun, Rude. Because he's got two white stick figures. And, like, Lely was white. So I'm like... What? He ain't got on show the drive flower. Remember this, this one? Every remember? piece of garbage in the city is not connected to the case. You don't have to keep everything. I don't know. That's been there for years. Yes. God cursed the footprints. Not solving the case for us. Au diable. Yeah. It's extremely easy. There are thousands lying around from the war, all completely unusable. 
It's precisely how easy it is that makes that bullet useless. We could find thousands more if we wanted. All of Revachol is full of them. But they seemed so mysterious. No need to be melodramatic. He arches his brow. The ceiling fan patiently spins overhead. Solving crimes is hard, man. It really is very hard. <laughs> he sounds surprisingly weary. That concussion must be making him dizzy. No. Are you ready to limp? Good. Where do you want to limp to? A gust of wind blows in from the bay. The dr aluminium box around you vibrates <sighs> imperceptibly. A familiar cold. A red thread on the roof upstairs. Taut. Plucked like a string by the gust. We should check Mrs. Karazayan. Oh, right, that's her fake name. Or that's her real name. Why not? Oh, goodness gracious. Another look at the window, perhaps? The one he was shot through. I don't know. I can't think of anything better. I should probably put my gun away. Woo wee! Hot damn! That was damn hard. The door is open. You can walk into Kim's room. <gasps> I'm in your room, Kim. I'm in your room. I'm in your room, Kim. <laughs> These papers bear the stamp of the RCM. They appear to be fragments of the lieutenant's paperwork, half finished. You may cap notes on this and other recent cases. I had got opened the door to your room. You were running a low bacterial fever the first night. Uh, thank you for keeping this thing alive a little longer. It would have been easy were it not for my concussion. We both got lucky, considering the odds we faced. Let's go. Yeah. I can't, okay, I can't go out of his room yet. Okay, it's fine. Don't worry about it. I guess we'll uh, head up to Klausio's room. Ouch, that leg hurts. Maybe if you don't run, it'll be okay. I want to run anyway. Fuck you. Oh, something's on a table. Next to the stack of bills, you see a note. A few lines jotted uh. down in large, uneven handwriting, just as the writer was about to rush out the door. I'm sorry. I fucked everyone over. P.S. I didn't kill him. P.P.S. Gift upstairs. A gift? I am not drawing my gun, yet, but I don't like gifts. Just don't walk into another radio trap, okay? Relax. Not everyone is out to trap you. It's hardly surprising. Yeah. You look at her rough jacket. What in the absolute hell? A thread made of nylon leads out of the room and onto the roof. And up here, tied to the antenna. Through the this window. window is pristine, at least on the inside. A red thread has been taped to the glass using adhesive mm. tape. It trembles. Direction so of the bullets? This is ballistics. She's left a trajectory for us. Yeah. Wow, I've got really good visual calculus. Here. Golden light melts away into the blue glassy darkness of your mind in it are two neon lit shapes a man and a woman on the single bed like the witness said the man is kneeling the woman is on her back it's the night of march 4th and a shot has just been fired the man looks directly at the woman the shot's possible directions converge in his mouth a ray cast from somewhere outside entering his brain ending him the red thread bisecting the room shows the trajectory of the bullets from the roof outside location a prime the glass fractures around the bullet hole shards face inwards like a corona behind the woman's back maybe if you extrapolate all possible points of origin mm. first the thread will make sense the man does not know the bullet has entered his brain he never will death comes faster than the realization. Ruby ruled this out vehemently. 
The shot would have been heard from downstairs, where no one heard it. Yeah. The likelihood of A Prime has fallen drastically. You may be looking for a sniper. The shot had to come from a greater distance, beyond A Prime. Should we extrapolate to include every possible point of origin in Martinez? According to your map, B Prime is left of the church, the top of the peninsula, of the and then other islands? With the northern edge of the abandoned boardwalk, ending with an islet in the bay. Let's call them B Prime. B Prime for boardwalk, B Double Prime for land's end, and B Triple Prime for the islet detective. Boardwalk. 700 meters away. The likeliest of these B positions, 20% chance. A skilled sniper could have made the shot, provided he had a safe sniper's nest. Even with the light on inside, we're talking military training. At that distance, the perpetrator would have had to take wind direction into account. 1.2 kilometers away, the least likely of these positions, let's say 3%. A truly skilled sniper could have done it, possibly from a tent. No. Too far-fetched. One kilometer away, a point beyond the docks, on an islet in the bay. The fort is ruined, but the perpetrator may have found a stable spot on the beaches surrounding it, where the concrete crumbles into the sea, as you saw in the coin-operated viewer. Mm. The shot would have been a small miracle, 5% likelihood. There is an extremely narrow field of view from the bay to the window. Between Rue de saint Gislain 8B and 33A, the angle would have been extreme and access to the islets is questionable, but it is a possibility. Then there's the thread the witness left. She did have a first-hand view of the event. Perhaps she found something in the outer reaches of her memory of it. You need to inspect it again. It suggests the bullet came from the extreme upper quadrant of possible angles from a point beyond the roof. B triple prime. The island in the bay. How does she know how to do she this? She was there that night. She would have known precisely where the bullet hole was in the glass. Sure, but... It also looks like there may be more to her skill set than we know. Well, she was like a spy, I suppose. Should we trust her? <sighs> I don't know. At this point... What difference does it make? Unless she thinks the perpetrator was standing on the ring antenna. <laughs> that is where the thread seems to point. I remember. So it is. Yeah, we haven't been there yet. For a second he seems... tired. Seems enthusiastic. I just haven't gotten a lot of sleep these past few days. Same. He doesn't really believe this will yield anything. <sighs> he is trying to justify it to himself. There. Across the grey water, amidst crumbling concrete, a birch tree, and the half-sunken ruins of a flak tower. Kim, let's go to the fucking island. Okay, let's go to the fucking island. <laughs> How do we get there? Joyce Messier had her sloop, but she's gone. Oh, Lillianne. Ah, yes, of course. The village. Let's go. Good lord almighty. Oh, at least I think the biggest frightening parts are behind us.